Long after the fire extinguishers are recharged and put away, there are other and potentially more important fires to be put out. Once we've evacuated the building, applied the bandage, extricated the survivor, what do we say? Research clearly shows that saying the right words at the right time can change the course of critical care from first contact to recovery. What we think changes how we feel, and how we feel changes how we heal. It is that simple. Look, we've just met, but within 30 seconds, just by talking and creating images in our minds, we could make each other laugh, make each other cry, or make each other reach for our inhalers. So it's hardly a jump at all to say that within those same 30 seconds, we can help each other to lower our blood pressure, stop the bleeding, or make the pain go away, just with words. Judith Acosta is the co-author of the book, The Worst is Over, What to Say When Every Moment Counts. It has been called the Bible of Crisis Communications by the International Journal of Emergency Mental Health. And Christy Northrup said it's like an answer to a prayer. It gives everyone, from parent to firefighter, the knowledge and courage to say exactly the right thing at the right time in a way that is healing, uplifting, and life-saving. For the last 10 years, Judith has been teaching emergency personnel, police, aviation teams, corporate groups, schools, hospital and military, all over the country, how saying the right words at the right time can do three critical things right away. Verbal first aid can save someone else's life. It can save your life, and it can help keep you out of court. It's been shown over and over that the people who sue for damages don't do it only because a patient died, but because they feel that no one cared about them. And that's why the essence of verbal first aid is rapport, how to build it, utilize it so healing can begin, and maintain it. But verbal first aid doesn't stop there. It teaches how images, what we think in our minds, have profound physiological effects on all of us, particularly in emergency situations when we are all in slightly altered and therefore more suggestible states. At such times, words act as commands to the autonomic nervous system, which regulates bleeding, blood pressure, body temperature, muscle contractions, interpretations of pain, even emotional reactions. The right words can actually change the medical outcome. Words can harm or words can heal. Don't die on me. The problem with that heartfelt plea is that the only thing the victim's brain actually processed was die. Even in normal situations, but especially when we're hurt or afraid, we do not process knots. What we are left with is the image of the only word that can be seen by the mind, which is dying. There is another way to do it so that we lead the person where we want him to go, to healing. As soon as the wound is clean, you can stop bleeding and save your blood. I'm right here with you. Stay with me. With the release of her latest book, Verbal First Aid for Children, due out this coming year, Judith will be available to discuss the ways in which this protocol can help you and your team. To contact her, please go to www.wordsaremedicine.com.